Hello everyone, welcome to the personal blog tutorial series. My name is Gitao Harrison and I will show you how you can build a personal blog from scratch using Python and Flask. Intentionally, this blog series is made up of five parts. The very first part is the home page. The home page contains a list of all the articles that have been posted on this blog. Each article post contains a title, the date the article was posted, plus a link to read more. So whenever that link is clicked on, there you have your full blog article. When you go to the very bottom of each article, you will find a form. This form is used by your user to engage with you. For example, they can choose to ask you a question or simply make a comment. The form is protected by Google Capture. Whenever a user wants to post a comment, they can post the comment in their own language. So let's say a user has posted a comment in Swahili the blog will be able to detect that that language is not English. And since that language is not English, which is the default language used for this blog, then a translate link will appear. This translate link will allow any other reader to translate the text used in the comment. And there you have live language translation incorporated into your blog. I would like to point out just one more thing. This form has Markdown enabled. Whenever a user wants to post a comment, they can choose to use the Markdown syntax to post their comment. The second section of this blog is the About Me page. Whenever a user wants to learn more about the author, they can come to the About Me page and learn who the author is, in which case it's you. So this page basically sheds more light on who you are. There is also the Portfolio page. The Portfolio page highlights all the projects that you have been involved in in the past. So for example, if you have a blog post, or a project that you've done previously, you can include it in the portfolio page. Each project will have a link to the project itself, the contributors to the project, and also a live view of the completed project. The portfolio page contains a list of all the projects that you've done in the past. There is also a call to engage with you. Let's say, for example, a user would like to know in greater detail what you discuss in the blog. They can choose to schedule a call with you. Whenever they click on the schedule a call button, then they have a calendar that highlights the days that you're available to have a schedule. So let's say a user would like to schedule a call with you. They can simply choose a day that you're available, schedule it with you, and confirm. Before a successful one-on-one -on -one schedule is in place, they will need to enroll. And enrollment basically means you need to pay the cost of the one-on-one -on -one consultation. And therefore, you have your card payment system included into your blog. And finally, you have the interests page. This is where you highlight all your interests or pretty much the interests that you're willing to share with the world. I mean, it's a personal blog, right? You want to also share your other interests. In this case, I have web development. I have Arduino. I have carpentry, I have fitness and wellness. The logo I've used for carpentry is not the right one, but basically I wanted to highlight that. There is the carpentry section that I'm very much interested in. So let's say for example, um, I would like to 
know more about web development i can just simply click on that and i have a bit of more information of what web development is and then i can go further and learn about each section of the web development aspect of the blog again there is a form at the very bottom that users can interact with me. The forms are marked on enable and protected by the Google Capture. So that's pretty much it for this web development project where you learn how to build your personal blog. By the end of this tutorial series, you will be able to also deploy this application and allow others to access it and engage with you.